Hello guys, Winston here. Today I have a new toy in my shop. This is the Pocket NC version 2. It's a full 5-axis CNC machine that's about the size of a bread box. I've known about Pocket NC for a while now. I actually saw them at Maker Faire New York a few years ago. But in my early days as a maker, the whole idea of operating a 5-axis machine was just way over my head. And unless you have a very specific need for 5-axis capabilities, it's very hard to justify putting down a couple thousand dollars for one. So the machine and the technology remained a bit of a mystery to me, until now. I know some of you are probably wondering how I got my hands on the V2, I mean, this thing isn't cheap and it just started shipping last December. Well, the folks over at Pocket NC orchestrated the granddaddy of all raffle prizes for Fusion 360's Fall 2017 Cam Challenge. And though I'm sad I didn't snag a $1,000 gift card to Lakeshore Carbide or entrance to Autodesk University 2017, I really can't be that disappointed with the results. And so, I find myself here with a CNC on a CNC. What I don't want to do today is give you guys a review on the machine. The specs of the machine are readily available if you google it, and I'm not informed enough to speak about this machine as an authority. But what I do want to share with you guys is something I couldn't find much of online. What the experience is like going from 3-axis to 5-axis. When I first started, I didn't know what I'd have to learn or what changes I'd have to make to my workflow. I had no idea how to control a 5-axis machine at all. So before my machine's arrival, I was already looking up guides and tutorials for 5-axis machines, and the results were... underwhelming. The majority of Pocket NC's training materials are text-based in PDF format. Not my preferred way to learn. They have a grand total of one tutorial project on their YouTube channel, and the only other comprehensive video tutorial I could find was by Xander Luciano. It was at this moment that I thought, wow, I haven't felt this lost since I was shopping for my very first CNC. Because even as someone who's pretty comfortable with 3-axis, I felt like the learning curve was very steep. And so I sat down and rewatched Xander's tutorial, and when my Pocket NC arrived, I watched it again. Then I fired up Fusion 360. I took one look at Pocket NC's default tutorial and immediately closed the window solely because the example piece they'd have you make looked lame. Turner's cubes are pretty traditional demo pieces, so I decided to make one of those instead. On a 5-axis machine, it should be a piece of cake with the exception of the bottom face. Now, the intent of this video is not to do a step-by-step -step tutorial. Sander's already done a great job of that. But I do want you to leave with a conceptual understanding of 5-axis machining in about 5 minutes or less. So, let's do a quick summary first of the V2's degrees of freedom before I really get into the cam stuff. The traditional axes of a CNC are X, Y, and Z. The new axes to know are A and B. You don't need to worry about controlling these two though, Fusion will handle those automatically in the background, so just worry about X, Y, and Z. I have here a 5-sided Turner's cube I drew up in Fusion 360. In order to create an accurate toolpath for it, I need to know where it will be positioned relative to the table of the V2. For that, Pocket NC has a machine table file that you can download. It shows you where the vise will be positioned as well as the natural center of rotation. You'll actually need to adjust this value in its defining sketch as each machine has its own calibration out of the factory. Using a dummy model as a volumetric placeholder for my stock, I can see where my stock will sit in the vise. Then I can place my Turner's cube inside that stock volume. In the CAM workspace, you'll create a setup using that placeholder as the stock, and you'll pick your center of rotation as the origin. The X, Y, and Z axes here should be aligned as they would on your machine in its neutral orientation. Now, the real magic happens in each individual toolpath. The option for tool orientation allows you to define what angle your end mill cuts from. The Z axis is always aligned with your spindle, so by picking a vertex perpendicular to my table, I can have my machine cut from the top or by picking a vector parallel to the table, I can cut in from the side. By systematically applying toolpaths perpendicular to all my reachable cube faces, I can cut out the features of my Turner's cube. My order of operations was to basically face each side before pocketing the successively smaller holes in the cube. To separate my piece from my stock, what I'll do is follow an open contour on the bottom of each face, leaving a small stem remaining to keep my cube from falling off. Then I exported my toolpath using the Pocket NC Post Processor. Using the machine itself is pretty straightforward. Once you turn on the machine and the embedded BeagleBone microprocessor boots, which took me a couple tries the first time, you can connect to it over USB through its static IP. The interface for your machine is all accessible on your browser, which is pretty nifty. Here I'm loading up a long reach end mill in an extended length tool holder. I discovered during an earlier run that a regular length end mill really won't let you reach past the center line of the machine and my cube is positioned off center so I needed to go past the B-axis to cut the positive Z face of my cube. Then I needed to probe for tool offset. It's a pretty cool operation, but there's a mild pucker factor if you're using a longer tool. 
This is the very first time I ran my machine, and seeing all my careful planning and fusion coming together was a huge relief. But when the program had finished and I'd parted my cube off, I was left with a small sense of dissatisfaction. My program was what you'd call 3 plus 2 axis machining, that is, I was using traditional 3 axis toolpads while my A and B axes were locked at any given time. I wanted to see some more interesting movements from this machine, so I went back to Fusion to add some chamfers to my cube. But to figure out how to cut those chamfers using multi axis toolpads, I had to open up the Pocket NC tutorial, which I was too eager to dismiss earlier. I use their instructions about the SWARF operation to program my cuts. This took me a little trial and error though, as their recommended settings didn't work perfectly for my model. Then I went back to my garage and ran the program, and let me tell you, that was cool. I'll just let this run for a couple seconds. So. My mission to learn 5-axis machining was a resounding success, but I know that I've only scratched the tip of the iceberg in terms of what this machine can do. I'll close out with a couple of thoughts I was left with after this experience. First off, the vise that Pocket NC includes is really cute. I thought the Nomad's vise was tiny, the Pocket NC's is microscopic by comparison. But it doesn't give you many options for work holding. If I were to use pins or these screws to grip my Turner's cube directly, I would leave indents in the wood for sure. I'm probably going to machine some form of jaws that I can put over these studs. For anyone interested in buying this machine, I would strongly consider the enclosure and the ER40 collet system for work holding. Being able to stick cylindrical stock concentrically within the B-table seems like a no-brainer if you're going to be doing a lot of work on this machine. And lastly, 5-axis machining is a lot to think about. Not only do you have to consider tool orientation, but you also have to apply the lessons you've already learned in 3-axis, like proper application of finishing passes, conventional versus climb cutting, and weakening of the stock as you cut. For example, between my first and second cubes, I reordered my operations so I was cutting the positive Y face of the cube first. So, I wouldn't recommend a 5-axis as anyone's first CNC, but if you're comfortable with 3-axis, the fundamentals of using a machine like the Pocket NC aren't that different. It's not easy to master, but you can get up and running relatively easily. I want to thank you guys all very much for watching, I'll keep an eye out for cool 5-axis projects to share with you guys in the future, and I'll see you in a couple weeks with a new CNC-related video.